for two years and a half was responsible to, to start a transformation on the way we were doing our manufacturing activities. And from there, when I finished that two years and a half, saying to everybody how to do, uh, how to do uh, the right thing, they said, oh, we have an opportunity for you, Sylvain. And uh, they send, they offer me here in Mexico. So move in Mexico and they said, now let's see if you can yourself do it, what you said to everybody to do. When Jose called and uh, started a discussion with me to say, hey, Sylvain, you know, after the good result the factory had done in Mexico, do you think we can bring the ATV in that facility in Mexico? And for me, it was the first time I was hearing that project uh, of uh, transferring ATV from Velcor to Mexico. So at the time, you know, when I got the phone, you, you have kind of a mixed feeling, okay? You have a mixed uh, feeling that, you know, wow, that will be a project, that will be passion, that's this thing that, like Bombardier, we like to do. In the same time, okay, you have your, 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 your Canadian friends, your Quebecer friends, and you said, you know, wow, I'm not sure it's, uh, you know, is, uh, is uh, the, the thing I want to do at the end. But all together, uh, you know, we end up, and we were not realizing that at the time. But I realized today, stepping back after, that was a huge project. And that was the, no matter we were already in Europe and in Finland, that was the real first time we were hitting the road to become an international company, heading in a, in a country we do not know, a country that is not easy to do, and that we transform uh, through the project, you know, to create a BRP culture in Mexico, because you cannot be the Mexican culture, it cannot be the Canadian culture, you know, you need to create a mix. I've been put involved a couple of months before, time to build a business case, see the board two, three times, and November 5th, 2005, okay, is when we announced to everybody. And uh, within a couple of days, <coughs> Alain Villemur organized to us to meet one of the associates of McKinsey in Dallas. And when we, uh, we met in Dallas with the McKinsey guys, he came with two of his specialists for companies that were moving, uh, you know, a site to another site. And us, we were having the timeline that BRP gave to us. And we started a discussion with them. We're spending a day, you know, for them to transfer to us some tips, some tricks, and so on. And the guy started to say, you know, that's an aggressive project. And the timeline for a project like that is 36 months. So we look at it, it's a 36 months. Say, yeah, there is some company in exceptionally succeeded to do it in 24 months. Below for, below that for it. So we, uh, we look at each other, the four that we were. And we said uh, to the guys, yes, but uh, they gave to us 13 months. December 4, 2006, we are hung. So the three guys from McKenzie look each other and said, guys, will not happen. Okay, so guess what happened, okay? The 4, the 4 December 2006, production was on, as per plan, everything. Does not mean we have not uh, uh, been wet a little bit of the time and uh, spent a few nights uh, not sleeping. That has been a very, very, very good uh, pro uh, project from BRP. And it has been lived the way uh, we always live uh, our different projects at the same speed than we ride our vehicles. Today we had created something interesting that continue to evolve and will continue to evolve, okay? And, and uh, with that, I believe is one of the part that we make a success of BRP, mainly because we did not let go the passions coming with the culture because the passions can be integrated in different cultures to achieve and overachieve uh, the different projects that we have. The company here at uh, Rovaniemi have, have given me really the challenge I wanted. This is international business. The people are very uh, closely connected to each other and we have very close uh, relationship. Like my boss calls me every week. We, are, uh, we talk about, sometimes we talk work, sometimes we talk, talk private things, but we are very closely working with uh, each other and, uh, and uh, I feel that I have a full support from, from him in all respect. I came first to the old uh, factory and the old factory was of course uh, uh, I mean, it was, uh, it was a kind of a labyrinth where we uh, had built the factory or enlarged the factory over the period of 40 years and it was not comfortable anymore and not suitable for, for producing snowmobiles. And uh, we came to this fantastic new 
uh, factory here and we were full of expectations. We wanted to grow business and produce more and everything. But then we had the recession. And uh, after, you know, having very, very high expectations, we, we had a recession. And that meant then that uh, we needed to do all, all the things to, uh, to uh, reduce costs. And we laid off people. We had uh, temporary layoffs and everything. But since now we are running extremely well and the uh, uh, three historically best years are behind us and we are very, very profitable company. Uh, let's say that uh, here at this new factory, of course, this gives a lot of opportunities for us. It's not only that uh, we can uh, increase production of uh, snowmobiles, but we could produce here other products also. And uh, for the past two to three years time, we have been very actively trying to find a, a kind of a second product that could be produced here uh, at Rovaniemi. And we have had a number of ideas what could be produced. And uh, I think that we will be coming up in one to two years time with a new product here. We, we have a good idea, but I'm not going to expose yet what it is going to be. So how's it all get started, BRP and the Johnson Avenue brands? Uh, it starts, uh, starts on a cold and, uh, and snowy day in December where they told all of us at Outboard Marine, you have no job, you have to leave the premises in 15 minutes. Uh, a few months later, I get a phone call in the middle of the night as I'm trying to decide which bill not to pay. And it's a man saying, uh, we have some people from Quebec that would like to see the uh, technology that you're using on your outboards. I says, fine, I'll, I'll come down to the plant and me and some other guys will fire up some prototypes and show them. Uh, who shows up is Laurent Boudouin and uh, Pierre Boudouin with a few others. I didn't know who they were. Uh, they were just guys that spoke with a accent that was unfamiliar to me. So we spent about two or three hours in the engineering department running prototypes of uh, two-cycle direct injection on personal watercraft, snowmobiles, outboard motors. And uh, at the time I didn't know it, but we were selling uh, the Johnson Evinrude brand to Bombardier. And uh, we had to start up again. But you've got a company that went bankrupt, things have to change. So all the factories that we were using uh, had to be consolidated into a new one. They found a book company, Golden Books, bought the building from this bankruptcy. Uh, and we moved Johnson Avenue into that factory, I believe it was about six months, about a day later than we thought we were going to get it done, we produced our first motor. So it was quite an experience, that first uh, six months of operation. So we got the company back up and running. We're producing outboards, uh, selling them on the marketplace, re-emerging as the brands. And now comes the time for the, this new technology, uh, which didn't have a name at the time, but would end up being called E-Tech. Uh, so, the little show we had for Mr. Bud Wayne, uh, now it's time to produce. And so we did, of course, with lots of struggles, but we ended up uh, producing the first ETEX, getting EPA awards, uh, the only product, uh, two cycle product allowed on Lake Constance and Lake Tahoe, things like that. It started to roll then, so we're, we're doing well with it. Then comes the snowmobile ETEX, uh, which has been a very successful. Uh, product in the marketplace. Our collaboration with Valcour and that was an exciting time for us. Uh, moving on into where we're going now, you know, you don't talk about on these sorts of uh, tapes, but uh, the excitement is going to continue. Of course, in the early going, there was quite a bit of debate. Should we even pursue this two-cycle technology thing, even though it has keen advantages for certain markets? And uh, uh, what actually happened is the, the Vice President of Sales at the time, I remember the meeting, he jumps up out of his seat during a debate and he says, yes, but can this make California three-star emissions? And my fellow engineer, without any hesitation, says, yes, no problem. Of course, we had no clue how to do that, <laughs> but the guy called our bluff and we proceeded to do that and make uh, three-star emissions, the cleanest uh, required at the time, and, uh, and it's worked out very well.